Okay, guys, so let's now look at recording electric guitars or basses in Logic. Um, this is not going to be a big in-depth tutorial about the theory of miking up guitar cabinets or anything like that. This is just going to be a quick tutorial on the mechanics of recording electric guitar or bass in Logic, all right? And the second thing, and this is really important, is this video is part of a playlist, and the playlist is called Audio Tracks and Audio Recording in Logic. It's very important that you watch all the other chapters in this playlist because they're all relevant to recording guitar, but specifically it's very important that you watch the first two chapters in this playlist setting up your audio interface correctly and the concept of through monitoring. Because if you don't watch those two videos and understand those two videos, then you're not gonna make sense of this chapter now where I start explaining about um, recording using these special guitar or bass audio tracks, okay? So go and watch the other videos and get them down. Okay, so let's get into it. Recording guitars in Logic. There are three different ways that you can record guitars into Logic. Let's check these three ways out. Choice number one, we can mic up a guitar or bass amp or combo and record our new guitar or bass parts directly from that. In which case, mic up your guitar amp or combo and then plug the mic lead into one of the inputs on the front of the interface. In this case, I'm using input number one. Next, in Logic, which has our song loaded, we create a new mono audio track and we set it to receive on that microphone input, in this case, input one. And then we adjust the input level for that microphone until we're getting a good signal and then we record our guitar to the audio track. Option number two, we can record a mono output from our amp head or amp modeling rig direct to an audio track. So we take our mono output from our amp head or modeling rig and we plug it into one of the line inputs on our audio interface. In this case, I'm using input number two. Then in Logic, which has our song project loaded, we create a new mono audio track receiving on that line input, in this case, input number two. And then we adjust the input level until we get a good signal, and then we record that output directly to that audio track we've created. If your amp head or modeling rig has stereo direct outs, then you take that pair of direct outs from the amp head or modeling rig and plug them into the first two line inputs on your audio interface as an input pair. Then in Logic, which has our project loaded, we create a new stereo audio track and assign that track to receive on that pair of line inputs. In this case, input one and two as a stereo pair. Then we adjust the input level for that pair of inputs and we record the stereo output from our head or modeling rig direct to that audio track we've created. Your third and final option for recording guitars in Logic is to record your guitars directly into the amp modeling rigs that are hosted in the program. To do this, you plug your electric guitar or bass into one of the switchable line instrument level inputs on the front of your interface, and then switch that input to instrument level so that it's receiving at the correct level for a directly injected guitar. Then in Logic, which has your project loaded, you create a new special guitar or bass instrument track. These tracks have amp modeling rigs on them and you can choose different ones from the library. So we set our track to receive on that instrument level input, in this case input two. Then you adjust the input level for that input on the interface and record your guitar through the amp modeling rig of your choice. Okay, so let's check out these special guitar or bass tracks in Logic now. Uh, these guitar or bass tracks they're just audio tracks, exactly the same as a regular audio track. But a guitar or bass track is an audio track that has an amp 
uh, SIM plugin uh, bolted onto the to the track, so that when you play your guitar through the track, you hear the sound of the amp SIM being added to the, to your guitar signal passing through. Uh, that's all it is. It's a regular audio track, but with an amp modelling rig bolted onto it. All right. Now we can make one ourselves using a regular audio track. So we make an audio track receiving on our guitar input, which in my case is input two, and we create a regular guitar, uh, a regular audio track, just a normal audio track, right? Um, I've plugged my guitar into input two on my interface. I've set that input to instrument level, so it's getting the right level for a directly injected guitar or bass. I've then turned up the input gain on that input to make sure I'm getting the right input level, not overloading, but strong enough. So the, the, the guitar signal is feeding into this track. If I activate input monitoring, the signal passes through the track, through the monitor channel, and off out to the speakers and headphones. And as there are no effects or anything on the monitor channel, when I play with input monitoring on, my signal passes through the track, through the channel, and out the other side, completely clean and dry. And then to turn it into a guitar or bass track, in inverted commas, all I've got to do is add an amp sim and a pedal board and some other effects on the channel. So we'll add a, an amp designer. This is Logic's own amp sim software. And then I'll choose a preset from its own internal patch library. We've got clean, crunch, and distorted presets. So I'll go with one of these. Um, OK. So. so we put an amp designer plugin on the channel now. So that means that my signal now passes through the track, through the channel, through the amp designer plugin, and then out the other side. So the sound of this amp and speaker combination whatever EQ and gain settings, etc. This is being added to the guitar signal as it passes through the track and channel. Right, so I've created my guitar rig. And now let's have a pedal board. So again, on the effects slot here for the channel, for the track, I'm going to add a pedal board plugin. And then what we'll do is we'll rearrange the order so the pedal board comes before the amp. OK. So here's the pedal board. And then I can put whatever I want on here. So I'll put um, I'll put this grinder distortion, and then I'll put um, this retro chorus, right? And then, um, not too much chorus. Just tweak the pedal. A bit. Right, and then I've got an amp and a pedal board now, and then I'll add some EQ. I'll, I don't know, I'll uh, roll off the bottom end quite drastically. I'll dip it down there just above 100 hertz. Add a little extra bite at around 4.5k, like that. Scoop out the mid a smidge. So I've added some EQ now, and then finally we'll finish off with some compression. The compressor, I'll grab a quick preset from here. Guitars, heavy. Right, and you know, I could add a noise gate to this as well at the the, at the start of this chain of effects. Uh, let's do that. Uh, dynamics, noise gate, and then the noise gate wants to go right at the start up here. There's the noise gate. Let's open it. Here's our noise gate, and then we just apply some gating. Less threshold. There you go. We've got some gate there to keep things under control. A little bit of extra release on that. Okay, so we've created our own guitar or bass track. It's just an audio track with an amp rig and a pedal board and other effects on the channel. So when your signal passes through the track and through the channel, the clean, dry guitar signal passes through all these effects and the amp sim and the pedal board are where it gets the sound of the rig and the pedals and everything else that you want. 
and then that signal flows out to your speakers and headphones where you monitor. And we're working with this concept of through monitoring, right? The signal passes through and the effects, the sound of the amp and everything are added here on the channel after the track, right? That is all the guitar or bass track is. So let's like get one from the library now. Guitar or bass. So it's going to be, what it is, is it creates a regular audio track, but it loads up a default channel strip preset from the library. It opens the library ready for you to choose a different preset and it enables input monitoring by default. So and there's no danger of feedback from a mic um, because we'll always plug a guitar into this type of track. So input monitoring can be on by default. We can monitor through speakers when we record guitar or bass this way. There's no danger of feedback because we're not using a mic. So I'm going to create a guitar bass track, again receiving on that same input, input 2, my guitar input, bam, there it is, input monitoring's on, the clean preset, Brit and clean channel strip preset has been put onto the channel, populating the channel with an amp and pedal board and other effects, which is a clean preset, input monitoring's on, as soon as I play the guitar it passes through, out the other side and I hear the sound of the Brit and clean preset, which is just a noise gate, a pedal board with a, 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 high, um, a distortion pedal that's switched off and a compressor that's switched off, they can be activated, followed by an amp, a box clean, a box rig with a clean sound, followed by an EQ and a compressor. There's a tape delay you can bring in as well if you want some echo. And the library's open, ready for me to change to any other preset. There's lots of clean uh, presets. <laughs> Some with effects. Then there's crunch ones. Some with effects. Yeah, and there's high gain, distorted, these are all high gain, you know. I'm not a guitarist, but you get the idea, you know. You know all that stuff, yeah. I'm not a guitarist, but you get the idea, right? So we've got all these high gain ones, we've got all these crunch ones, we've got all these clean ones, and all they do is they populate the channel, like all channel strip presets, these are all just channel strip presets, they populate the entire channel for the track with a combination of amp pedals and other effects, which give it the sound that you see in the title. Clean, crunch, distorted presets, there's experimental ones, and there's also the same for bass, clean bass presets, crunch ones and experimental ones. So I'm going to go with um, Chord Burner. Okay, so that's all, all, all one of these guitar bass tracks is. It's an audio track with a guitar rig and effects bolted onto the channel so that your signal passing through gets that sound of the amp sim, uh, amp designer plug-in and other effects added to it to give you that guitar sound. That's all it is. So let's get a good little recording down. Let's, um, Put an 8 bar cycle range on, metronome on, let's record some guitar. So we've got a bit of guitar there. And, you know, the input monitor is on, we're monitoring through the software, so I hear the sound as I record. But, and if I record something here, when that piece of recorded audio plays back, it plays back through the same channel with the same amp, the same pedals, the same effects, so it sounds identical to the sound I hear as I monitor through the software as I record and play. When I play, I get this sound. When I play back any recorded audio, I get the same sound because both the through audio and the playing back audio are passing through the same amp, the same effects, everything. 
But as we know from the second video in this tutorial uh, playlist, this concept of through monitoring means that we always capture our recording here at the track part before the signal flows into the monitor channel for the track. So if we turn all these effects off, we've actually captured a completely clean, dry recording. None of the effects on the channel ever get captured and imprinted with the recording. So I've actually recorded a completely clean, dry guitar, but then that plays back through the, the same effects that I monitored through, right? And so the clean recorded guitar plays back through all these effects, which adds the sound of the amp and everything to it. So because we never capture the effects in the recording, they're always added afterwards on the monitor channel. We can change this guitar to any other sound we want any other time. That's the beauty of this through monitoring system. We never commit to recording the guitar effects. So our guitar is always recorded clean and dry. We can change the sound after we've recorded to anything we want. Yeah? That's how it all works. Now let's look at the concept of the presets involved here. However you set up your guitar track, um, when you save the project, that's how it will open every time. Okay, the channel for the track contains all of the effects, including the amp sim, the amp designer and the pedal board, a plug-in and any other effects. And the total combination of effects, including the amp and pedal board that are on the channel, all of those effects together makes up the channel strip preset. Okay, now you can load a channel strip preset as a starting point, then you can open the amp you can tweak the amp and cabinet combination. You can open the pedal board, tweak, change the pedals, adjust the different pedals, adjust the settings, etc. Tweak an EQ, tweak the noise gate, tweak the compressor, etc. You can tweak everything and then save it as a custom preset. You, you know, Or don't bother saving it. And when you save your project, however you've tweaked that, track in its channel, that's how it will load every time in the project, but you just won't be able to use it in any other projects unless you save it as a custom channel strip preset, the combination of everything you've tweaked on the channel. Right? But the individual amp plugin, the amp designer, and the individual pedal board plugin, they're obviously plugins in their own right, standalone plugins, and they each have their own internal menu of their own patches. So on the pedal board here, we have its own internal menu with all different effects presets. You can load any of these anytime into the pedal board. You can create your own custom selections of pedals and save as, and save them as a, as a custom patch like these three I've created here. Distortion Compressor Wah, Grind Filter Echo and Octofuss Chorus Wah. These are three custom presets I've created for the pedal board. Right. So you can set up and create or load or create and save your own patch presets for the pedal board plugin. And the same with the amp. With the amp plugin, it has its own internal presets. Clean ones, crunch ones, distorting. These are these are just changing the amp and cabinet combination, right? These are patches for this plugin. And again you can save and create and save your own. Here's three I created and saved. You just do you know set up the amp and, and cab sim that you want with whatever settings and then do save as and here's three I've saved brown amp my marshall one and my marshall two so you can load these presets which are combinations of amp and cabinet tweaked in a particular way or here are all your um these are all the possible amp and cabinet 
combinations matched. So this is matching amp and cabinet combos. So sunshine is an orange, an orange head with an orange 4 by 12. Small sunshine combo is a smaller orange amp with a single 12 inch orange speaker. All right. um, vintage British stack is a vintage Marshall with a vintage Marshall cab. Modern British stack is like a, a, a JCM type, more modern Marshall with a more modern Marshall 4x12, etc. So here is a list of all possible matching amps and cabs. But also you can mix and match. You can choose any head and mix it with any cab. And once you've done that, so let me I'll, let me go with the vintage British head, the vintage Marshall. And I'm going to put that through a, a, an orange cab, a 4 by 12 Then I can change the mic. Changing the mic does change the tonal sound. So you've got, you know, very high quality condensers. Yeah, then some dynamic choices and a, finally a ribbon mic. So I could say, well, I'm going to go with this um, SM57. Then once you've chosen the mic, you can adjust its position relative to the speaker, which again tonally changes things. On axis, off axis, nearer, further away, etc. So you tweak the amp, tweak the cabinet. With however you set them up, you either choose a matched pair or mix and match a head with a cab, or you load one of the presets from the own internal patch library of the uh, amp designer. But however you've done it, you arrive at your custom preset, and that's that. And then you can save it. Save as, and it'll appear here as a custom patch for this plugin. And again, just to recap with the pedal, same thing. You can arrange any effects you want, just drag them in from here. To get rid of them, just drag them out, right? Create your own combination of effects and save as and save it as a preset, an internal preset for the pedal board. So once you've set up your amp and pedal board how you want, right, you can then tweak any other effects on the channel like EQ, the gate, compression etc. When you've done all that then finally you can save that custom channel strip preset to the library here which can be loaded any time into any other project. All you have to do is make sure that that blue arrow there is coming away from the library and pointing at this channel strip setting slot at the top. Right. What you don't want is that little blue arrow there to be pointing at any of these individual effects in the in the effects rack here. That little blue arrow wants to be pointing at that slot at the top. And then you just go to the library here, save, and save it as whatever it's called, you know. So I'll call I'll call them this one Marshall uh, Vintage One or whatever, whatever I wanted to call it, right? BAM! And it's saved as a channel strip preset here in user patches. So you can load that anytime and it will populate the entire channel with your custom amp, custom pedal board, and, and all the other effects that make up that channel that gives you that overall sound. And there's all your custom ones you've created and saved. These are channel strip presets. But always remember, inside the amp sim itself, it has its own internal patch library that you can create and save to or load from. Uh, and it has the matching amp and cabs that you can choose as starting points or mix and match heads and cabs to create your custom patch. And the same with the pedal board. It has its own internal patch library you can load from or save to and create your own custom ones, right? And then once you've done everything on here, overall you can save the whole channel to the library as a channel strip preset. And that's how it all works. So yeah, I hope that's useful. Remember that all of the other videos in this um, tutorial playlist, uh, the title of the playlist is Audio Tracks and Audio Recording in Logic. Everything in the playlist is relevant to working with guitars or any other type of audio. Okay, so check out the other videos because <clears throat> they're all relevant and they all help you to be more creative um, with your, with your uh, guitar recording in Logic. Okay, so um, yeah, that's these... Um, special guitar or bass tracks in Logic. They're just an audio track with an amp, rig and everything else bolted on the channel so your signal passing through or on playback passing through um, is given the signal is, is passing through all those 
uh, effects that give it the sound of the particular amp and pedals and, and other effects. That's all it is, right? Just right. Shalvat is um, guitar or bass tracks in Logic, and that that'll do for guitars for this for this whole playlist, right? I don't want to get too deep into it. This is all about general audio recording in Logic, but guitars is part of that, all right? Okay, I'll see you for the next video.